You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 173 of Healthy Critters Radio on the Horse Radio Network. Healthy Critters Radio is brought to you by Biostar US. Find them online at biostarus.com. On today's show, we discuss what senior horses and senior dogs teach us. The critter of the show is the chameleon. In critter nutrition, we focus on yeast probiotics. And in Coffee Clatch, we ask, what character from a children's book does your dog or horse remind you of? Listen in. I'm Tigger. And I'm Patty. And this is Coach Jen. I'm in charge of buttons around here. Thanks for tuning in to Healthy Critters Radio. This is the part of the show where we catch on catch up on what everybody's been up to. And being January, mm-hmm. that means there is a migration going on. Yeah. Yes. So Tigger True. and Patty, tell us about what's been up. Or down for me. Or down. Over? <laughs> down? Yeah, down. It's down for you, Tig. It's down for me. Yeah, we're down. We're both down. We're down in we're down in Welly World. So world Tigger, is... you drive you drive down, right, Tigger? Yes. Are you just not keen on flying, or is driving just more efficient? It's a better way to bring the dogs <laughs> and all my yeah. stuff. How many doggies well, did you, you bring down this year? Car. Two. Which two? Kimosabi and Keen. Kimosabi and Keen. Now Kimosa- Kimosabi is one one of the OG crew. And yeah, Keen is he's, one of the younger ones, be right? 15. Wow. In two days. Wow. Oh, now, oh my Keen. gosh, Tigger. Yeah. Is is 15 years um typical senior age for an Aussie, or is that uh is he it's, like older? It's than those right ones? at the end, especially his size. He's a 65 pound Aussie, he's not a small Aussie. And I, I looked it up, and 15 for his size dog is 93 in human. Wow. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. He's getting up there. Yeah. Yeah. And Keen's one of the younger dogs, right? Yeah, he's he's three. What made you choose those two? Uh, Kimasabi raised Keen. Ah. Uh... And Keen is very good if I send him out. Sabi can't see anymore and really can't hear anymore. So I, he gets lost in the backyard. So I just tell Keen to go get Sabi. And then he runs over and bumps noses to let him know, you know. Oh. Yeah, it's really amazing. dog. Yes. There's other dogs. I was going to say, yes. I need to borrow Keen. I need Keen for when I get lost in the backyard. <laughs> well, you've got catch. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm teasing. Yeah, I'm teasing. I see like a cat at night. <laughs> what, that, <laughs> that was a lie. Um, no, my, yeah, no, my, yeah, no, my, my dogs are, are great with that, but I, I love that Keen does that for Savi. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yes. So it's when you, amazing. when you head South Patty Perucci to Wellington, yes, ma'am. um, yes. you, how many horses did you bring down this year? I was, I'm very light this year. I only have eight horses. Only so eight. Each, <laughs> oh, I, I honestly, I feel like, I feel like I'm, you know, I actually have time to like come in the house and sit down and eat lunch. It's odd. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I like it. But, so are, yeah. when you, when you so, come down for the season, are you one of those, do you have the horses shipped professionally? Do you bring them down yourself? How does that work for your, for your crew? I used to always bring them down myself, but I have to tell you, shipping them professionally is what I've done the last five years. Um, and I, that, it's just easier because I put them all on one trailer. They have box stalls. They go straight through. I find like they get here a little bit more, ref- you know, refreshed um, because I would always stop. Mm-hmm. So this way they just kind of go through. And there's two trains of thought uh, about it, you know, whether you stop or don't stop. And um, I have believed in both. <laughs> right now I'm currently <laughs> believing in going straight through. And, um, and I like Tigger. Um, drive down. We drive a, a, a car down and then uh, my truck and trailer 
Um, and that way I can bring the dogs and then I have a trailer down here for when we, um, ship the horses around. And also it's extra storage because Florida is sort of known for not having yeah. <laughs> storage when you go to barns. I, it, it's, it's, I'll tell you, I just, I don't, I don't understand that concept at all. It's like, let's have 30 stalls and do tiny, tiny, tiny areas for hay. And yeah. tiny well, areas there's a reason us. we do that don't. here. There's a reason because during most of the year, it's too humid to keep large quantities of hay around. It will literally mold just sitting in the storeroom. Just because these are air conditioned rooms. They're yeah. And then, well, and if you're going to air condition a room, you're not going to make a very big one because it costs a lot of money to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. I just, to me, what they, what they charge for us to be here <laughs> for the time that, that we're here, um, well, yeah, we need a bigger that. room. I mean, that, there, that, there that's that. the hardest part. But, yes. but having said that, I'm, I, um, I can't complain about anything. Now, do you bring a large quantity of hay with you? Do you bring any extra hay with you or do you just start getting this I down do. here? Do I do. I do. Yeah. Um, Cause where we are in Texas, coastal is a big thing. Um, and most of my horses love coastal. Um, so I bring that and then I bring alfalfa and then after I run out of the coastal, then I start to wean to something else. I've got a couple of horses that don't do well on like Timothy. So I have to look for orchard grass, which mm-hmm. is not always easy, mm-hmm. but yeah, I bring, I bring my own hay down for, yeah. you know, for a period. If I could bring, if I could bring a trailer down that I could get me through the season, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, I do. I, I know. Of, I know of people who do that down. up here in Ocala that they just, they buy a tractor trailer load and bring it down here with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you you have to be well, so yeah, we, careful we about how you store that. it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, this morning it was so humid. I I get it. I used to live in Houston, so I get the humidity part of it. It's 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 tricky. It's a it's a tricky balance. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So what's nice is is that the, the last few places that I've been have had air conditioned areas, and so that I'm grateful for. Yeah. Really grateful. Yeah. So the trick is you have to good. have your hay storage on the north side of your barn. And okay. and so that the southern facing wall does not get any direct sun uh, and put it on the north side of the barn mm. so that it never gets direct mm. sun. And then it won't have the ginormous swings in temperature. Um, I only know this because the last barn we were at where we lived on the farm and far at the same place, it was all one property and the um, hay stall was in the corner of the barn and it the hay just it we never had any issues it was never moldy it was never musty we never had damp problems versus the place we were before that it was a battle and i know a lot of people down here battle i've gone to buy hay from people who had extras Mm -hmm. at the end of the season they stored it on the south side of the barn don't bother just throw it away uh but there i didn't know what's the problem oh and then it dawned on me it was because of the location Mm -hmm. of the hay room and that the southern facing wall faced sense. into the aisleway, so it never got direct sun. Yeah, so. interesting. Helpful hint when you're building your barn. Yeah, there you go. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, with That's your eight horses, has has competition begun down there yet, or are you still getting warmed up? Um. We were considering doing a show last weekend, which we didn't do for various different reasons. So we will be competing not this weekend, but the first weekend in February. So um, normally, um, if if the horses adjust well, depending on how that all goes, um, I like to do something like towards the end of January. Um, but that it, for some reason, it just everybody was ready, but it just kind of didn't plan, work out that way. So we'll we'll start to hit it hard in February. There you go. Goes crazy now. Tigger, are you working on freestyles again this year? I'm working on quadrilles. Quadrilles this year. So you just you do the quadrille for the remind me the name of the little competition they have to raise money. Challenge of the Americas. The Challenge of the Americas. Ooh. Now, are you doing quadrille for one quadrille team or more than one? More than one. <gasps> oh, how many? Wait, what? <laughs> I have an exhibition quadrille. Than- which Patty's riding oh. in. I have a competition quadrille. I have a jumping quadrille and I have a stick horse quadrille. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Now, when, when is the challenge of the Americas happen? When does the competition happen? March. Hang on. Bring it up calendar. Uh, 10th. 
March 10th. So we have a little bit of time. I would like to request that we have on the Healthy Critters show at least one member of each of those three different teams. Oh, forget it. Yes. What a great idea. Oh, Isn't that a great brilliant idea? idea? See? Yeah. No, I, I, I will never be able to get one from each. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you got one. You got so one. You see? Need one for- yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely can't get the jumper quadrille. And I really, I, I mean, I, depending on who's on the stick horse quadrille, I might be able to maneuver that, but I'll never get the jumper quadrille. <laughs> it's hard enough to just, you know, get them to practice because they have so much going on. I mean, you yeah. know, they're donating yeah, their time. Everybody. Yeah. Um, which is, awesome, I, I think which is the jumper awesome. side and the hunter side of WEF is way crazier than the dressage side. Having spent a lot of time yeah. there. Yeah, it is crazy. They, they come down. How many horses did you bring down? 165. Yeah, yeah exactly. It is nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's, it's just totally what? nuts. Yeah. And they and they're all these different divisions. I mean, there's like 12 rings at WEF. Mm-hmm. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> So well, anyway, anyway, um, so you're keeping busy down there. I'm, I'm excited to keep hearing about the progress of how it's going though. I love hearing about how, how the teams are practicing and, and the glitches that happen and the fun stories from. Oh, the glitches. Stuff. They're yes. epic. <laughs> so that's what the stick horse quadrille is going to be is a parody of all the glitches that happen in quadrille practice. Oh my goodness. Okay, That's kind of funny. It's going to be very funny. How do you pick the stick? The stick horse one. I, 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 that's the organizers picking those people. Okay. So she that's doesn't so get funny. to even pick her own team. <laughs> no, but yeah. that's all right. I mean, Uh-oh. I know what I want to do. They have to be, they have to be sound. That's all that counts. Yeah. They have, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And have a sense of humor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. For the stick horse one. You bet. Yeah. There we go. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, speaking of, uh, being sound and having a sense of humor, seeing your horses, seeing your dogs who may or may not be physically sound, but mentally they help us be more sound. So what, what brought on this topic? What senior horses and dogs teach us? Um, I think because I'm watching the progression of aging in Kimasabi and remembering the aging in Lionheart Mm. and remembering or being reminded of what I learn about myself being with them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's very bittersweet because you remember the dog or the horse in their prime and all Mm -hmm. the things they could do and all the adventures you had or all the shows you went to or, you know, the life you led together. And, and now it's the twilight. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that there is much to learn about what seniors teach us about patience. I mean, there's sometimes when I get so frustrated with Sabi because he cannot hear and he can't see and I need him to go outside and I'm clapping and yelling and waving my hands and, and he's looking at me in the direction. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, you, you just, you get, I get a little frustrated. I have to go over and, you know, okay, let's go this way. But I'm also really grateful for the reminder of what it is to slow down and still enjoy life because he's, you know, he's not hurting. He's, um, he doesn't have any major health issues. He's just winding down on his journey. That, that's very interesting. And what we talked about a little earlier with Sabi and Keen that helps him out. Yes. Something that I think I'm starting to learn a little bit from the senior furry friends in my life 
is the importance because, hello, I'm working on being a senior. I'm creeping up on age 60. Oh, you young thing. Yeah, my young thing. <laughs> That's the joy of living in Ocala. I can still feel young at 60. The, uh, the importance of recognizing someone who genuinely wants to help and accepting it graciously. Uh-huh. Because we as horse people tend to be independent to a fault. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To a fault. And as someone who has senior people in my life, I'm very lucky in that my mom and my dad are still with us. That there's nothing more frustrating and terrifying as someone who has a senior in their life as that senior who will not recognize help when it's being offered. Right. And accept it. (laughs) Yep. But when you're a dog or a horse, that help is graciously accepted. The keen or Sabi would never think to say to Keen, you know, not that's hey, okay. I don't really hey, want you buddy, to. Hey, buddy, I'm lost. Yeah. It was like, no, he Sab, here comes Keen. He's gonna help me out. Good job, yeah. Keen. I'm with you. Yeah. That's because dogs work in the moment. The horses are in the moment. They're not Absolutely. holding the baggage back. They don't have the ego that we have, right? So that is something that I think I'm learning a little bit from being around senior animals and like your story with Keem and Keem and Sabi, but also with having senior people in my life. So yes. Yeah. They do teach us a lot. Yeah, they do. And my mother's 92. Oh, you lucky clam. You still got her. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, she's sort of leaving it mentally. Um, but it's very different dealing with her than it is dealing with Sabi or Lionheart or, you know, other animals I've had that have passed or, or, and got, you know, we're lucky enough to get old. And I, in in some ways, I think animal senior years are easier because they just kind of go with the flow. And that is like a, a, it's such a good reminder every day. They, you know, Sabi doesn't stress. He doesn't worry about stuff. He just goes, hey, I'm going to nap for most of the day, that I'm going to get up, yes. that I'm going to eat. In the moment. Go, uh, yep, yeah, they're in the moment. Totally yeah. in the moment. Yeah. I, I, of late, been a lot of stress in the universe, in, in my little universe. I've not been very good about being in the movement. I've let that worry part. Yeah. I, worrying about yes. part things I have no control over. Yeah. But I'm letting that creep in and... This conversation this evening is very much bringing me back to, oh, yes, I need to be better about being present in the moment and a little bit less worrying about something that could or could not be the future. Correct. It, yeah. it, we really end up wasting mm-hmm. energy, I think. Yeah. Keep, well, we end up wasting energy. We end up losing sleep. Yep. <laughs> we end up malnourished. <laughs> and and we, we don't solve the problem. And the problem is not solved. You're correct. No. That is absolutely correct. We are worse off for it. And the yes. problem is exactly the same as it was before. It, exactly. <laughs> Patty Perucci, are, do you have some things that senior horses or dogs have taught you? Yes. Um, I, uh, two years ago, lost um one of my dogs um was a border terrier and he was just kind of my favorite little buddy and I think the biggest thing that he taught me and reminded me is and this is not always easy for me when I say not it's never easy is just the patience part of it and how grateful how grateful I need to be should be we all should be and witnessing the part of their lives, anybody's lives, whether it's our mother or dog. I mean, I've lost a a lot of my family members and just being able to witness this part um, and appreciate, appreciate everything that happens. And it's hard to, like you said, not be um, frustrated or stressed by any of this, because when you look back on it years, you know, from that time that it happens, um, my biggest thing is always trying not to have regret. And um, of course I always do, um, which drives me to try to be a better person. But I think the biggest thing is just learning to be patient in those moments because um, they 
the dog, the person, the horse, whoever, um, are still who they were. Yeah. Um, years ago, but they can't be what they were. You right. Know, they, 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 they just can't. And that's, you know, for me with Sabi, just give me Sabi. Sabi to me is, is going to always be an icon. He started so many things for people, you know, just the, the breed and whatever, which is family members to me. And, you know, I, I think about um, all of that stuff and, and just him raising other dogs and having Keen go out and help bring him in when he can't see it. Like what, a, what, like just relish the blessing of that, you know, which I'm I, Tigger, I know you do. Um, oh, for but I sure. think for me is just being back and trying to enjoy the process of, you know, how noble they are and what they give to us and how grateful we should be just having them for a brief period of time. And celebrating it, you know? And celebrating it. Yeah, and not making it. And I think we get really stressed as as humans. I mean, you know, when as dogs get older, then we start that worry. What happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? But, um, and I, I've really tried, especially coming to a new house in Florida, it's all tile. I had to get Sabi socks with grippers on them because he was falling down all over the place. Um, not to create more drama for him. You know, not to worry, yeah. oh my God, this might happen. Da, 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 da. Which we all do, you know, and we do it out of caring and compassion. Absolutely. But, um, I I don't think it benefits our horses or our dogs because they pick up on the worry and they're like, oh, maybe there's something I should be concerned about. And so I I think trying to stay neutral and compassionate, um, and not get into the fear zone. You know, not, mm-hmm. am I going to wake up tomorrow and Sabi will have passed? Possibly, but I can't think mm-hmm. about, I can't dwell on that. Yeah. I, I've just got to be in the now. He's here. He's sleeping. It's all good. And he's here again. You, you got to bring him again. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> hello everyone hello 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 i feel we've been so long without speaking (laughs) that's true we're a little off our schedule yes i know that everyone's having a nice new year except for tigger which is not nice (laughs) that's true Mm. So we wanted to know how you're feeling about being down in Wellington this year. Well, so far, I have not had to go anywhere except um, to my farm, which is perfection in my view. Excellent. Mm. Yes. So I like it because I get to spend as much time as I want outside or inside. And I have a fan inside for hot days. So I can just relax in front of my fan upside down to aerate my bellican. <laughs> and my sister is here with me at all times so that is appropriate and comforting for me you know uh, mostly we get fed on time i like it here good so no complaints from hedwig as long as i don't have to go to a hated competition of any sort gotcha no or shows for me i've graduated i've done my time yes <laughs> That's so true. And and your servant <laughs> is taking adequate care of you? Adequate, you know. I mean, I would never give her anything above a C. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gives her something to strive for. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. A C plus. And are you right. getting bacon? A- no, we have not had any bacon since we've been down here. But when she goes to help Hello, she comes home with munchkins. Oh, those is that donuts? Yes, tiny donuts. Oh boy. 
And the dogs who go with her get them in the truck, but my sister and I get them at home. <laughs> we don't even have to go to get munchkins. Oh, how perfect for you. It's pretty great. Yeah, it sounds like a win-win. Yeah, no kidding. Working so out for me. It's a, it's a good season for you, Hetty. Yes, I'm enjoying it. Thank you for inquiring. <laughs> but do you have any questions for us? Mind. Well, so many. Uh-oh. For example, why would you leave your homes to come here when you're all so stressed and tired all the time? Well, we're stressed and tired at home. Why not do it somewhere else? <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the sun. You, you think that the sun where it's not snowing. It's the weather then that does it for you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I enjoy being warm myself, but at home, I don't really leave the house during this weather. So, ah, yeah, the winter would mm. not be, you would want to stay close to the fire. Yes, I have a beautiful wood stove for that. Aha. Uh -huh. That sounds nice. Well, I'm very glad you're having a good winter so far and that Wellington isn't stressful for you. Thank you. I'm really enjoying my time here. I think this is so awesome. I've never heard you say that. It's just amazing. I just, I, keep, I just keep waiting. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting. <laughs> no, nope. everything's Other lovely. Shoes. Oh, good, oh, Hetty. Perfect. That makes me smile. I'm so glad I could bring some joy to your life. Uh, much appreciated. <laughs> Thanks, Hetty. All right. Bye, folks. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Real horses and real dogs are healthier, perform better, and recover more quickly on real food. That's why Biostar empowers horse and canine owners with 100% whole food nutrition, supplements, and feeding programs. Biostar products are made at their own certified non-GMO facility in Gordonsville, Virginia, using real food ingredients that are raw, freeze-dried, or dehydrated, never cooked, and are free from artificial flavors, colors, soy, corn, wheat, and molasses. The Biostar product line includes a wide range of whole food, horse and dog supplements, treats, and unique artisan poultices that embrace the ancient and traditional uses of clay and plants. Visit BiostarUS.com today and learn about whole foods and canine and equine nutrition so you can make the best decisions about the care and health of your horses and dogs. That's BiostarUS.com. Whole food nutrition the way nature intended. We are at the critter of the show portion of the program, and um, I was deciding... Uh, between a tree frog and something else. And Tigger said, do a chameleon. Hey, good choice, because they're kind of <laughs> cool. I don't know th I don't know that I'll get everything in, but they're super cool. Um, okay, so chameleons are best known for their distinct range of colors and being able to shift hues of degrees of brightness, which is obviously used in many uh, statements about being a chameleon and whatever. So it's kind of cool. They are... Um, they're distinguished by their two, and I can't, I'm, I can't even pronounce this word, some type of zygotaculous feet. But I'll tell you what that means is that um, two toes pointing forward and two toes pointing backwards. Oh, wow. Um, which is kind of cool, which gives them um, great dexterity when handling food. Um, they also have a, a prehensile tail that gives them. Um, the ability to grasp, which is important for them, um, it, it, in in hunting and um, uh, being able to hang from the trees and all that great stuff. But the super cool thing about chameleons is that their eyes move independently. Which wow. I, I mean, I feel like most people know that, but it's kind of cool. So that means they get two individual or three individual. Uh, images in their brain that their brain can analyze. So that's kind of neat. So when they're hunt, but when they're hunting, their eyes will stay straight forward in uh, coordination to give them, again, um, it's called stereoscopic vision, which means their ability to reg register more than one visual three-dimensional shape and form. Like I said, kind of cool stuff. And we all thought it was about colors. 
Uh, chameleons are um, adapted for climbing and visual hunting. Their prehensile tail offers stability that can let them hang from a branch when they're um, in the canopy. Their habitat can range from a very warm uh, t- rainforest to desert conditions. Various species are found in Africa, Southern Europe, Sri Lanka, but they've also been introduced to the U.S., which I did not know. Um, Hawaii, California, and Florida is kind of where you can find them. Um, chameleons have uh, a superficial layer of skin, which, can tri- which contains pigment. The under layer of the cells are very small nanoscale quanine crystals. And I tried to look up exactly what quanine meant, but there was it was kind of in depth. But basically, it's that's what changes their their coloring. The color range signifies um, a physiological condition that in that that changes for different particular reasons. For example, if they are um, it, communicating with other chameleons, if they're hot or cold. Um, their their colors will change. Um, their colors adapt uh, to raise and lower their body temperature. For example, if they need to absorb more heat, then they'll the, the the darkness to absorb more light. Or if they need to go lighter, they can reflect light for more temperature stabilization. So basically, they 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 can adapt to their environment and situation. Um, by changing their colors. So chameleons are very adapted for climbing and visual hunting, and their prehensile tail offers stability while they're resting or basically hanging out in the canopy. Um, They actually refer to their tail as their fifth limb, which is kind of neat. So for me, I just, I, I, I literally, being down in Florida, there's been so many different types of critters that have come into my path. And um, this, this is one that I didn't realize was actually in Florida. And I, my, one of my goals while I'm down here is to seek out and find a chameleon because I'm right on the Wellington Preserve, which is, um, I'm, I'm certain. Oh, they're yeah. Here. So my, yeah. So um, it's kind of like, rainforest conditions at times don't you think sugar <laughs> yeah for sure so, so anyway i think they're really cool and there's a whole lot more information to them that's like way way above my my pay grade and things that i can even pronounce but they're a neat little lizard and critter so now we're at critter nutrition and the focus is on remarkable yeast. Um, probiotic yeast strains are fascinating. Non-yeast probiotic strains, such as lactobacillus and bifidus, need microencapsulation to survive the harsh environment of the stomach. But probiotic yeast can survive the gauntlet of the digestive system, arriving intact when reaching the colon. The two most common probiotic yeast strains are Saccharomyces boulardii and Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces boulardii stays viable in the hindgut, where it helps support fiber digestion and maintenance of a proper pH. S. boulardii can improve fiber digestibility in the hindgut, which is especially important for older horses, hard keepers, and high-performance horses. <clears throat> improved fiber digestibility means that older horses can utilize their hay better. Hard keepers can gain weight and high performance horses benefit from the increase in short chain fatty acids, which provide as much as 70% of the horse's energy. Short chain fatty acids and S. Boulardi, um, is created with the formation of butyrate. Butyrate is one of the short-chain fatty acids that helps strengthen the lining of the gut, can reduce diarrhea, may help address ulcerative colitis, and can reduce acute inflammatory responses in the colon. Because S. is a yeast probiotic and not a bacterial probiotic, 
It is unaffected by antibiotics. You can feed this yeast during the course of antibiotics without reducing the effectiveness of either. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, commonly known as brewer's yeast or baker's yeast, has been instrumental in winemaking, baking, and brewing since antiquity. But only active Saccharomyces cerevisiae can function as a probiotic. The inactive version is known as nutritional yeast. Like Saccharomyces boulardii, Saccharomyces cerevisiae can improve digestion in horses, helping them better utilize their feed. As cerevisiae can also improve protein and mineral digestibility. When to supplement with probiotic yeasts, active probiotic yeasts. Senior horses benefit from the warming properties of the active yeasts. This helps support increased digestive fire for better utilization of food and nutrients. Horses in colder climates benefit from the warming properties of the yeast probiotics, especially during winter. Horses dealing with diarrhea and fecal water syndrome benefit from the hindgut activity of yeast probiotics that help to regulate pH and maintain microbial balance. Hard keepers benefit from yeast active yeast probiotics that help the digestion and, and utilization of food and nutrients. Biostar has focused on the equine GI tract since our inception in 2007. Health and wellness begin in the gut and the microbiome is the new frontier. Biostar is committed to learning, understanding, and sharing new research and studies on the complexities of the microbiome. We recognize the connectivity of the brain-gut adrenal axis and immune system and their interdependent roles in regulating homeostasis and wellness in horses. And Who knew about that? Yeah. Cool. Yeasts are pretty cool. It's really cool that you can mm. give probiotics. I mean, you can give antibiotics and they're not affected. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and I don't think that, I don't think that giving the horse nutritional support for the health of his gut, not necessarily for vitamins and minerals and calories, but nutritional support for their digestive tract. It's huge. Is, it's not addressed sufficiently by the the traditional medical community. No, not at all. You know, oh, throw some throw, throw some probiotics at them. They'll be fine. Yeah. The the key yeah. with probiotics is they have to be viable. They have to be active, have to be alive. And the only way you know that is if you see CFU, colony forming units. If it's listed on the label as colony forming units and what it is, 100 million, 20 million, 10 million, 10 billion, we're 100 billion. Biostars, all our probiotics are 100 billion per teaspoon. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. But, you know, if, it, if you don't see CFUs, it's not active. It will not be able to colonize. It won't do anything. Yeah. So it's just, it's just mm. measurement. What what matters is how much a horse with that GI tract, a hundred billion is not high. You know, some vet clinics go up to 400 to 500 billion CFUs for a sick horse. Mm. And these companies that put out probiotics at 10 million, 20 million, you know, it's, it, it, it's they're active, but you need a whole lot more because there are more micro um, biota in the gut than we have genome of the horse. There are more micro organisms than there are genes mm. by a lot, 10 times more. It's the largest mm. colony of living things in the body, in the gut, and on the skin. We are more microbe than anything. <laughs> We're more microbe than anything. Mm. I like that. We need to put that on a t-shirt or a meme or something. <laughs> yeah. And now we're at Coffee Clatch. The question is, what character from a childhood book does your horse or dog remind you of? 
Okay, first, I, I always have to ask, what inspired this topic? I do not know. It ah. just popped into my head. <laughs> stuff, pops, Truly. stuff pops into your head. Crazy stuff. Yeah. The crazy um, stuff pops into your head. Did, did this pop into your head um, before or after you developed some crapped ri- cracked ribs? After. Yeah, there we go. Did yeah. it have any? Did it have anything yeah. to do with strong, strong painkilling medications? I haven't taken any. <laughs> well, oh, did it have I've to do really, with? Did I've it have really to do with being delirious from being in so much pain? Uh, possibly. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Mm-hmm. So, um, to help get get us started. Tell us which so which one I, of your furry friends and what uh, childhood. Okay, book? so I, I started with Keen, and he reminds me of Curious George. Aww. <laughs> hmm. And I guess I'm the man in the yellow hat. The man in the yellow hat who's always saving the day, as they say. Yes, yes. Um, and then I started thinking of Charlotte's Web. You know, what animals do I have that would, um, you know, fit some of the characters? Mm-hmm. And I had this marvelous cat named Hobie. He would be Charlotte. Very wise, very knowing, and then he would disappear. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I didn't have a Wilbur. Wasn't that the pig's name? Yes, that mm-hmm. was the pig's name. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of my animals have been Wilbur's, but um, I also had a cat that was very much like that sneaky little critter in. Um, Charlotte's Web. That oh, was the, the rat. The rat. Oh, what's his name? Oh, Templeton. it was there. Tem- Templeton the rat. Templeton That's right. the rat. Mm. I, I I had a couple of cats like that. You know, the sneaky. Oh, we're not doing anything, and then they, you know, yeah. knock stuff off the counter and. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. And how about you? Oh gosh, you see, you see, you took one of mine. Oh, with Charlotte's Web. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ni- Nigel was going to be George. Oh, because if I if memory serves, it's been a very long time since I read a Curious George book. But if memory serves, George Curious George was very very curious. Yes, and Jor- Curious George was always getting himself into a pickle. Yes, but Curious George was also afraid of a lot of things. Yes. Oh, that does fit Nigel to a T. Absolutely. Oh, to a T. Mm. <laughs> yep. He's, he's very curious. Then he gets himself into trouble and scares himself and go, oh my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> you created this. You did this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And, and then I have to be the man in the yellow hat who uh, usually gets stepped on, knocked over, bitten, kicked, <laughs> smooshed against a wall, trying to <laughs> save Curious George from whatever mischief he's created. <laughs> I think I think oh, Kimasabi cool. is definitely a Dr. Seuss character. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean which one? I, I I think he's sort of a little bit Horton hears a who. Aww. You know, he's just a big, gentle, happy, compassionate dude. There you go. Yeah. Scooter, Scooter, the hackney pony. Cat yes. Cat in the hat. Cat in the hat, of course. Clever, encouraging everyone else to get into mischief, but not a mean boat <laughs> in his body. Yep. Oh, that's, that's good perfect. Fun. Cat in the hat. There we go. Patty? Do you, okay. I do you have any? One. Did you did? Yeah. I do. I did. And, and, and it's funny because it was so it was so obvious. Um, I don't um, listeners. I don't do great at this type of stuff. But this this one, I think, is actually quite good. Um, I would I don't. Did you all ever read the Good Dog, Good Dog Carl books? Um, have you ever think, heard of that? I good Dog we were, Carl. I've heard of it, Wilder. but I think we were too old for it. Well, good dog. Carl. He, uh, well, we were all too old for it. But my um, a friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine, had a her, She had a Rottweiler that she named Good Dog Carl, and she would always buy these books for. And it was, it was about a Rottweiler who was babysitting, 
Um, and it would, there wasn't a lot of words to it, but he would do kind of like these mischievous things with this little, this little girl that would get on his back. And I see my horse, Hal, like he would totally be that, you know, go, go, you know, being the babysitter, which would, you know, I mean, who would have him be a babysitter, but being very responsible, but then taking him out on adventures and um, doing kind of different fun things. Yeah, it, they're, it, they're actually really great books. There's not a lot of words to them. It's a lot of, it's for younger kids, um, but uh, but just kind of cute stories about different mischievous things. They, well, I shouldn't say mischievous, mi- different things that they get into that you would never expect a toddler who um, <laughs> riding a Rottweiler would go around town doing these different things. So I think how would be that person or that that perfect par- character. You know, we forgot about Beatrix Potter. Oh, yeah. There's so I mean, many of them I forgot other, about. Oh, my God. Squirrel Nutkin. He was one of my favorites. Oh, Madeline. Oh, Madeline. Madeline. Yes. Holy cow. Yeah, Madeline. Mm-hmm. Oh, and my God. Barb. Madeline is great. Barb. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> And then there's, there's ever, and everybody has a horse in their life that is this character. The, um, the cat that walked by himself. The cat that walked by himself. That's it. I have never read that. Oh my gosh. They're fantastic. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, it's a just so story. Just so stories. Yes. Oh, I loved those as a kid. And it talks all about how. The cat makes a deal with man, and and it the person. Oh, and there's the wild horse. Yeah, and yeah. the wild dog, and the wild dog, and oh, the cat. The cat is a chestnut mare. Oh. Every chestnut <laughs> mare is the cat. Yes. Oh so. my gosh. We had them on I a mean. vinyl record album. We had oh, a. Oh wow! Yeah. That's cool. And you can f- you can find it on YouTube still. It's the wow. same recording. Somebody took the recording and put it on YouTube somewhere. So if you dig it, if you dig around just so stories, eventually oh, you'll find remember it. Remember the one about the camel? How the whale how the camel got, his got his throat? Hump. Yeah, how, how the, the camel, camel got, got, his, got hump. his hump. Yeah. Oh, I've heard that recording. Oh, that's cool. Okay, 1964 Disney, Walt Disney Presents, Disney. Rudyard Kipling's Just So Stories. That's and the one I listened to. It is. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, my God. I can't believe you found that. You can buy it for $30 Mm -hmm. on uh, Poshmark. Really? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And if I had a record player, I would buy that, but I don't have a record player. Oh, I so remember this. Sterling Holiday is the voice. That's it. Sterling Holloway. He has such a great voice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. What a walk down memory lane. There you go. There you go. So uh, podcasts are not a new thing. It was, no. the, it was the 1964 <laughs> version of a podcast. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's cool. And they're, they're great stories. And I distinctly remember. That, you know what? That would be great for your grandchildren. These stories. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. You might even be I, able to well, find I, them I, on on podcasts somewhere. Yeah. And Phoebe's so good about stuff. I'm definitely going to look into that. Just so stories. Oh, they're wonderful. That wraps it up. Our trip down memory lane tonight. Yeah. Yes, it does. (laughs) We're going to stop by again and chit chat about all things healthy horse, dog, cat, chicken, chameleon again next month. So we'll see you then. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks to our sponsor, Biostar US. You can find them online at biostarus.com. Thank you.